everybody. I'm proud to say our favorite sponsor, Hulu Plus, is still with us. Use Hulu Plus to take control and watch your favorite shows. Take control, people. Do it wherever you want, whenever you want. Catch shows like Parks and Rec, Family Guy, Law and Order, SVU, and uh, any of the shows you're on on the, on the Hulu Plus, do you think? Uh, I, I don't, I don't. I, and watch I Don't Know. Grab your extended I'm free... I'm not on camera. I'm off camera. Who are you talking to? <laughs> you are technically off Who are you camera. talking to? <laughs> A friend. <laughs> grab, grab your extended free trial of we'll Hulu see. Plus. We'll now. see when this interview is over if we're friends. Now by going to HuluPlus.com slash chat. That's HuluPlus.com slash chat. Welcome back, everybody, to Kevin Pollack's Chat Show. Hey, why'd you call it that? Because it's tough to get fired. Hmm. <laughs> With a name like Chat Show. Hey, Sammy. Hey, Chat Show. How are you, buddy? Am I on camera yet? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> 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 uh, suffice now to I say, <laughs> our guest is rare to go. <laughs> uh, somebody walked off in the opening before we got to it. I think it was Joel McHale. Literally got up and walked out. I believe you're correct. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you want to live up to something. What did he do? Why did he do that? <laughs> exactly. And then uh, Fred you... Willard removed his shirt in, yeah. the, in the 30 seconds before we went live on 71 him. years old at the time. Yep. Yeah, thought it... I saw him with his shirt off did in you? Florida at a film festival just walking through traffic because you had to walk through traffic. Again, I'm off camera, so you don't see me. <laughs> just in like a little, little like 80s looking uh, Shorts. bathing suit. Oh my just God. Just heading towards the water and it was a sight to see or, <laughs> not, or not to see. Well, we have a clip of it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the now, video. Our, our audio only listeners. Oh, they're going to love this. They're finally yeah. an episode for us. Picture Freddy, Fast Freddy as he's now known. Um, Sammy. Yes, sir. I wanted to hear uh, how your week has been. Uh, it's been fine. You it's were here fine. last Sunday? I was, to right. my knowledge. Yeah? Yep. Our guest then, of course, was... Um, Somebody great. Tom, got, it was Tom Papa, right? It was, it was Tom the Papa. Tom Papa. And he was great. Yes. Who yeah, we yeah, watched again this morning. I like morning the quiz and and staff. From Blues Traveler. In the Candelabra. In the, the Candelabra movie. We saw a little bit of the Candelabra this morning. Mm -hmm. I enjoy mm -hmm. it more every time I see it. It's, uh, it's going to win, I'm going to say, nine Emmys tonight. I Thanks know. for reminding me. Tonight is the Emmys when we're doing this live. Are you watching us on the YouTube stream live? I tweeted out the link. If you're not, you have yourselves to blame. Um, our guest today, his show, uh, one of his seven shows, yes. won <laughs> an Emmy already. Yet again. He's already a winner. <clears throat> he got the envelope from the dead Ed that's McMahon. A, that's at least two years in a row. You're I'm already mistaken. a winner. It's got to be two years in a row. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. When he's allowed to be on camera. Uh, Jamie, you're staring down the barrel of another trip to the Walt Disney World. No and... one cares. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> anything else you want to share? Let's talk about the documentary we're working on because it's fun. Yeah, well, go ahead. I like um, Who, Who's been some of your favorites that we've interviewed thus far? Andy Kindler. Andy Kindler. Of Holy course, crap. He's been killing me. Holy crap. And um, Keckner, of course. Dave, Dave Keckner. Keckner was oh, great. Love every square into that man. But Bob Saget was really funny, but it was hard to get him to like focus <laughs> and Bob like Saget, come to a point. Well, his act and now right. his 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 way of talking is to uh, not let anyone breathe. But no, it's been fun. That's and it. it's hilarious, and entertaining. It has been fun. <laughs> um, my favorite, uh, uh, I don't know. Somebody asked me. You know, we've done about twenty-seven of them so far. I think I did. Um, and tomorrow, with a bang. Chris Guest, Marty Short, Paul Feig, and Lorraine Newman. A horrible Whoa! day. A horrible day. <laughs> Fuck. Showing off? You bet I am. Who am I talking to? Why am I? Uh, Bobby Cannavale may have been my favorite because he was the biggest surprise. I knew he was funny. That's why I asked him to do it. He's known as a dramatic actor, but I knew he was funny as fuck. And I was hoping to get a Richard Kind story out of him, which we did. And now I've had a few other people do Richard Kind as well. Can you do, can you do Richard Kind? I don't understand the question. <laughs> You've got to jut the lower jaw six inches forward. That's where it begins. 
<laughs> and then say, say something horribly uh, inappropriate. Mm. Now, you know, the only way to bring it home is to say something about the person's mother. It's become a thing now. Everybody has to tell Richard Kind. Stories. Right, Richard Kind. That's really initially it was uh, tell us about your favorite dead comedian, and now it's no, tell us about Richard Kind. You're no one in this town unless you've got a Richard Kind story. There, and now it's been said. Um, I have somebody I want you to do an impression of, and I can't remember his name, so it's going to be hard for you. <laughs> All off camera. This is gonna, still off camera. This is yeah. going to be better. This is going to be better. Um, I'm look him up. I'm uh, after. T nope, uh, Oh yeah, so Jimmy Fallon was great in New York, and now we're in L.A. and we're shooting, and we had a great week of shooting, and uh, uh, we got two weeks left. I'm very excited, and um, let us know how you're watching the show. We have a, a winner this week of Larry King game, finally, after a long, long time. Write to us a contact at KevinPollocksChatShow.com. Submit your own Larry King game to win your own Kevin Pollock's Chat Show t-shirt. Unlike our guests, you may actually wear yours. Our guest, including today, gets one in the gift bag on the way out. Uh-huh, very exciting. And then it ends up on the guy cleaning the pool. That's, uh, or gal. No, the best is whenever Quan. Ileana Douglas found one at a thrift store. Le Ileana <coughs> Douglas found one at a thrift store. Yeah, which I'm hoping is from a guest and not a fan. I'd That's hate to think the fan got a free guest. one from uh, submitting Larry King <laughs> and then sold it for a dollar. We don't, we don't have any fans in L.A. Uh, good point. Well, what, like si NCIS. what sizes do you have? Yeah, we have, uh, I think we just have the tall Italian. We have, tall Italian. We have the tall Italian size. That'll fit today. me. The six foot. That'll fit me. The six footer. Mm -hmm. Um, Still off camera. You know what? Let's let's do the Larry King game, uh, Kenny, Dr. Chen. Let's get our winner out of the way. And by that, I mean thank you. Uh, his name, of course. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, shuffle him off to Buffalo. But beforehand, thank you. Um, here it comes now. Yep, there it is. Here we go. Larry King game winner. Uh, <clears throat> write to us again. Contact at KevinPollockChatcher.com. Questions for the guest, theme song, record your own Larry King game. Also, my other uh, ridiculous podcast that I'm going to ask today's guest, who to at one point be a guest on, we had Scott Ackerman last uh, Tuesday, Thursday. called Talk and Walk, and like this rambling conversation for an hour as Christopher Walken. It's my dinner with Andre, only Andre is inexplicably Christopher Walken. And we don't mention him ever. It's a delightful show. It's the stupidest thing ever. Uh, now, Abby Dorn from uh, Minot, North Dakota. Sends in this uh, Larry King game. In 1928, I lost my virginity to Rose Side Show. I was blindfolded, strapped to a sawhorse, and lovingly abused by a bearded lady, a midget, strong man, and a clown. I passed out at some point. In time, when I woke, I found myself curled up between the elephant and monkey enclosures. Since then, I have been unable to stand the smell of peanuts, bananas, and face paint. Line four, Toad Suck, Arizona, you're on the air. And that's all you need to write to get a fucking t-shirt. <clears throat> My guest today... Toad Sir. <laughs> ladies and Jews. Upcoming shows, by the way, Ben Folds from the World of Music on October 13th. Jim Rash, Academy Award winner, hit a home damn show on uh, October 27th. Can I just say about the October 27th show? Please. We're going to have a special guest in the audience. None other than my mother, Lynn Levine. What? Putting that out there. Seriously? Seriously. <laughs> They're in town for the weekend? She is. Oh, you won't let the dad come? No, he can't. None of my business. He doesn't travel well anymore. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to welcome uh, Mr. Award-winning Ken Marino to this table at this very moment with this question, sir. Free association to begin. Am I on camera? To be, you will be when you answer. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do it. A little free association to begin with, please. Okay. Just say whatever the first thing is that pops into your head. Uh, Ready? Okay. Judy Bloom writes crappy books. Uh, Did Judy, you respond? Uh, uh, don't knock Judy Bloom without her. My younger self would never have been able to decode the random acts of madness perpetrated by that fascinating creature known as the teenage girl. Yes! I didn't think you could pull it out after all these years. Yeah. yeah. Good God Almighty. Yeah. So you had to, how many times did you have to say it out loud before you could remember those ridiculous words? I don't remember anything. <laughs> right. Anything. Let's be clear. Uh, and I had an audition for uh, uh, Dawson's Creek. Which you got. Which I got. Uh, and, and that was the first line. Uh, I was a professor, uh, a lit professor. And that was my first line. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to even w read it. Let alone. Like off the page. So let me just try to get it in my head. If I get that out, then the rest is gravy. Yeah. Then the rest of the lines I can yeah. wing. It doesn't matter if, right. if I could say that line. And so I said it over and over and over and over and over and over and over in my head. Auditioned. It was there. I, I, it wasn't, I didn't know, I don't know what I was saying. I was just saying the lines. Right. Got the part. 
And I was like, wow, I got the part. Hey, that's great. And then I'm like, but when they, uh, when they actually shoot it, they'll, they'll trim it down. Right. Yeah, it's just too much. It's too much. It doesn't too much. Even mean anything. Then I watched the show. Yeah. And I saw that that's how everybody talks yeah. on that show. <laughs> and so they didn't. And right. so I was like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. And then I just kept saying it uh, so I didn't fuck up because it was my first day right. on the set. And so then I had to say it a bunch of times walking through students and stuff. Mm. And, uh, and now it won't leave my head. Nope. It's, out, it's in there. Yeah. And that was, uh, I have to say, ten, over 10 years ago. Easily. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And you, I mean, I assume you've been asked this a, a couple of times in the last 10 years. Still, you, uh, you passed that test in a nanosecond. Hey, don't knock Judy Bloom. Without her, my younger self would never have been able to decode the random acts of madness perpetrated by that fascinating creature known as the teenage girl. Holy shit. Yeah, by the way, better performance now than 10 years ago, I'm going to guess. Because you yeah. just said it. Yeah. The research shows yeah. that your design... I'm like a fine wine. Well. Well. Are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm like a cheap Trader Joe's wine. You're like a fine wine in the, in the sense that you should be opened. <laughs> and, and, and sit for a while. <laughs> four espressos in here. Four ice espressos. While we're on the wonderful subject of auditions, I'm going to ask about just one more. And then I'm going to let it go. Oh, we're in it. We're just in it. Yeah, yeah. We're just diving right That's in. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, <sighs> let's not go so far back in time. Okay. A simpler version of you. You just bounce around. When you sit it up, as it were, for an audition for a little film we like to call Dodgeball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I dressed up as a, I dressed, I decided to, to dress, what? <laughs> I decided to dress sure. the, as, up as a pirate. Why not? And go, the, the, the part was a guy who's delusional and thought, thought he, he was, was a pirate. pirate. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go dressed as a pie. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to show them what I'm about. I can do this. But I commit. I'd never done that before. So I was like, I'd never done that before. Let me try it. Yeah. And I did it. And I even taped like a parrot to my shoulder. And this is, I've been, where I had been here for a while in this town yes, and working. Yes. But I was like, I'm going to try something different. Yeah. I want to be remembered. First of all, I have to stop you for a second, if you don't mind. How was the drive in the car in the outfit? It was weird. It was weird. It was, you know, it wasn't, we weren't anywhere near Halloween, and so I was just driving around. But you're in Hollywood, so it doesn't matter. But then I got to, it was like near Western and, not Western, um, Robertson and, um, and Beverly Hills, sure. somewhere over there. And, uh, and so then I just started, what I usually do is I walk around, I get there early to an audition, and I'll walk around the streets and I'll just go over the lines in my head and stuff like that. That's what I usually do. Now I don't give a shit about lines anymore. But, um, <laughs> And I was dressed as a pirate, and I was walking around, and a guy rolled up to me, and it was Larry Charles, who I had just shot a pilot for the last season uh, uh, that didn't go. Mm -hmm. And he saw me dressed up as a, f a stupid fucking pirate. With a bird attached to you. With here. a bird attached to my, like, duct taped to my shoulder. Duct taped, let's be and, clear. And uh, he's like, Ken? And I was like, I was like Hoping a crazy Hoping it man. wasn't you. Yeah. He said, yeah, Ken? Ken? <laughs> Hey, Larry! And I, at, when I first saw him, I forgot that I was in a pirate costume. Sure. And then we talked a little bit, and then he drove away, and I was like, oh, <laughs> pirate costume. And then I went in, and I, then I was like... What was their expression when they saw they, your... I want to know, what's shit. it like in the waiting room with the other <laughs> asshole actors who were not dressed as pirates? Oh, I didn't on, go. I, I, they were all dressed as no, pirates. No, 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 nobody was, and, and rightly so, because you, don't, you shouldn't do that. If the, if the kids have anything to learn today, yeah, don't it should do that. be don't. don't do that. Don't do that. No, just don't do it. Don't do it. But you got the part. <laughs> no. What? <clears throat> no. This is a terrible story. No, I didn't get the part. I think that's the point. The point is, is yeah. don't don't embarrass yourself oh, unnecessarily. Or, or look that you look like look you like you care. care. Don't look like you care. Yeah, I I used to sabotage auditions by going in and leaning way too into the yeah. look like you don't care. I, oh, I, oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's how you get parts. Uh, but I but don't it, give a shit. Yeah, don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't really need this one. You've got to figure out a way to express that. Yeah, I don't need this one. Sort of hate everybody in the room. Yeah, but you've been on the other <laughs> no, side not hate of it. Everybody. You've been on the other side of it, as I have only a couple of times. Yeah. When people come in and you can smell that on them, that they're playing. I don't give a shit, and I don't need this. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. they hit that pedal a little too hard. You're right. No, there's a fine line. You oh, definitely oh, need oh. to. You need to. It's not. It's not that I don't give a shit. It's like. Um, I think you just in life you just need to realize that there's there there are things there are bigger more important things in life than yeah. than than that. And it's gonna it's a numbers thing. You're gonna you yeah. know, hit the ball a few times. Just do your thing. Yeah. Just do your thing. Right. And then don't worry about it. Right. Yeah. And they already know what they want. So. Right. Yeah. 
That's uh, the, I, my thing was, and t I'd love to know your take on it. Now that you're a uh, uh, an award winner and a director, which I'm, uh, I want to hear more I, about. An award winner, oh, but Children's Hospital won, won uh, an, Yet Emmy, another Emmy. an Emmy this year. Yeah. It lost, but you know what lost this year? To Children's Hospital. Burning Love. Burning Love. Yeah, fuck that. So it was, so I was, I, it was a bittersweet night for me because I was there with my wife who oh. wrote the show. Ugh. And same category? Same category. Aye. We were sitting in front of Aye. all my uh, co-workers Aye. and, and, uh, uh, producers and writer friends and and you know the creators of Children's Hospital to show I'm I'm very proud of and and I was rooting for. And you were at the forefront of the creation of that show as well, no? I wasn't at the forefront, but I came in actually that season that just won. I, w I came in as a, a co-EP, right. but I was very invested in right. working like I was a, a producer that particular year. So I was like rooting for that show, but then when Burning Love got nominated. Which I you was, and your wife created, and yeah. she wrote, and you directed. I was kind of hoping that Burning Love would yeah. because Children's Hospital won the year before. They've already had their run. They had their thing. You're brand new. You're new kid in the block. Come on. Yeah. Spread it out. I'm going to blame the E! Network. That who are you going to blame? Comcast in particular. Okay. Yeah. I love... <laughs> I still, I mean, I still work for them. So I know. I don't, I don't blame them at all. I think they're <laughs> terrific. That's what I was trying to get out of here. <laughs> uh, but you've been on the other side of it. People have come in and auditioned for you. So... Um, I find I'm... I'm That's I'm, good, like, just for the record. I just, like, I would have forgot... I would have forgot that we were talking about that. Absolutely. But you you brought it back around. So you your mind works I still properly. Because I still have an area of interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Because I'm, I'm fine moving on. We've got 17 pages to get through. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a dossier, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I've been on the other side of it. Because I've been an actor on so many auditions, when people come in... I always give notes, even if they walk in and I instantly know they're wrong. They'll do it, I'll give them notes, I'll give them a chance to do it again. Yes. Uh, before I let them go. Are you the same, or are you? what do you do? Uh, I, if somebody comes in, I, I'll always, always, and especially if you see that they're nervous. Right. You say, let's do it a couple more times. Yeah. yeah. I will, we'll do it, like, I'll, I'll want to do it as many times until I see that they got what they wanted to do out, and on some level, maybe right. not 100% of it, right. but, 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 you know, cause, because I hate as an actor, like if I was if rushed or something, I was like stuck in traffic and I get there and you do it one time and they're like, thank you. And you're like, fuck, man, yeah. I didn't, you know, that wasn't, yeah. that wasn't, that was give me a couple more swings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when somebody comes in and I have the power to kind of say, you know, do it again, I will definitely say, let's do that one more time. And um, no notes or tr try it like this. Right. Just throw the rest of it away or whatever. Right. And. And then you see them kind of relax into it, and you, at least you get to see what they wanted to do on some level. Yeah. Except for the few times uh -huh. when they start to spiral out of control. Like, get really neurotic. Oh, and yeah. they try it a second time, and they go, oh, 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 and I'm like, do it again. And they're like, I can't, oh, no, okay, I'll do it. And then they do it in, like three or four times, and then and you yeah. can see them lost. They get yeah. lost. Yeah, the notes thing is also helpful in terms of, can they take a note? But more importantly, you're giving them a chance to do it a couple of times. Because the whole process of the audition, I'm convinced, is designed to fail. But what's the better... I, I, I agree, but what is the better... What's the, what's the better way of doing it? Other than just tell, asking a friend to be... A friend offering who you know is talented. every role is the only way around Offering it. a role. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, there, you're right. <clears throat> there, it, it, it's designed to fail, but there's no other choice. If you're going to see new people, there's no other choice. Right, you have yeah. to see people do their thing. Yeah. I've learned to get, to, I've gotten to a place now where I kind of like it. Yeah. Where oh, I like yeah. auditioning. Yeah. Because it's like a little little th short 30 second or a minute or a minute and a half play. Yeah. That you get to do. Yeah, and you're also seeing the material on its feet. I've made rewrites based on the way people come in. Oh, yeah, yeah, for absolutely. Sure. Yeah, and you can, you can, and you, and you know, if you want it, you can use some of the ideas that people <laughs> throw out in the room. And say, I hey, think let it's, me, let me. I think it's that may be the best reason to have hold auditions. Is to just do a rewrite. Just, to, just to steal some people's <laughs> ideas. <laughs> yeah. who you're not going to hire. Yeah. <laughs> and what about changing the material? Because that's always a thing. Boy, it took me a while before I thought. Yeah, I'm going to change a couple of words here, because that can misfire. Oh, uh, what about changing as an actor changing as the material? an actor coming in and then. Uh, I've learned that. Make it your own? You got to. You got to. You have to. And then when you're a director and people come in and they make it their own, you're fine with that because you've already I'm done it. I'm fine with it as long as you... Make it better? Well, no. Just, just understand what the thrust of the scene is right. 
and you can bend the material and bend the lines all throughout the scene as long as you yeah. understand what the intent of the whole scene is. If you like start going off in some weird crazy direction where it has oh. nothing to do with the scene and you're just doing like five minutes of blue material, sure. then I'm like, oh, okay, I get what your thing is. Right. You're, you, don't, you don't, for lack of a better term, respect the text that you're working off of. It's always, yeah, don't fuck with the context and then within that say whatever you want. In fact, when I watch the show, I get a sense that you've hired people now who, while um, you've got a great script, you're allowing them to. You talking about Children's Hospital? I'm talking about Burning Love. Burning Love. Are you allowed <coughs> people to fuck around? Yeah, yeah. It looks I like mean, it. Uh, you know, I, I, th my s s stock answer of this is you do what's written, because I think Erica, my wife, uh, who wrote it, wrote really funny lines. We do those, and then it would be stupid to not let these really funny improv comedians then go off right. and take it into different places. And as long as you get what the, you know, the, the, the meat of, of what was on the page, then, then you never know where it's gonna go. And, and, and when you, as you know, like it, when you hire really funny, smart people, they don't, take it so far away from the script. They, they just enhance what's there and, and, and take it to another level and, and bring all these wonderful ideas. And then what's great is then it's a dance. Then you're like behind the camera, you're like, oh, that's great, okay, th throw that in. And we can, we can go back a scene right. and add some more stuff. And all yeah. of a sudden there's like a whole other storyline that we didn't even know about that was created on the day or yeah. you know over the course of the shoot. Yeah. Coffee's working. Good, good. Um, <clears throat> uh, you... I wasn't sure if the coffee was going to work. It, it, it works. <laughs> uh, like, I can't do this without shaking. Nope. That's more about last night. And... It is more about last night. <laughs> <laughs> um, your do first... I look puffy? Nope. Your mm -hmm. first time directing... How's my tea's on? It's not oily or shiny at all. Yeah, Thanks no. to okay. our lovely... Yeah, I don't sense yeah. any of the guinea oil. No, you know that's what you're asking. Well, this is what keeps me so young. I'm 57. <laughs> <laughs> this is what keeps you so young. Yeah, the oily, the oily face. I don't know what it looks like on camera. Well, yeah, don't judge by oh, these. Don't, do that. don't judge by these monitors. No. They're from the 40s. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Uh, that's why we have that there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. No, I'm, don't. I'm be... I feel like I'm sabotaging. I don't think it's possible. I don't mean to be. Mm -mm. I'm just jacked up on caffeine and nervous <laughs> because what, what, what? because the reality is okay is... you're not that comfortable doing this no <laughs> <laughs> you thought he might have said no comma yeah I'm fine with it no he actually meant no He's period comfortable it's it, I, I just I'm <sighs> a lot of people aren't by the way yeah I know but some people handle it really well Man. well you know they're what will faking make you it more comfortable is if we take a super quick sidebar to talk about uh, your former tenant and friend of the show Steve Agee okay that's right my uh, former tenant yeah yeah and and scream sneezing scream sneezing in my in, in, in your old in your home well he rented at, what, what is, is that that's the that's, let's yes go from there go from there Steve Ag, I, I bought a house uh, a number of years ago, and I rented out the bottom floor, which was its own kind of guest house. Mm -hmm. But it was just, it was like a, it was connected to my floor. And uh, so it wasn't like soundproof properly. Ah. And sure. so when I rented it out to Steve, who, who's, who sneezes very loudly, it's, screams. It's, he deliberately, when he feels a sneeze coming on. He makes a whole production. He makes a whole it. production. Like, oh, it's a Oh, whatever, it's a you know, whole like, thing because he's trying to clear out all of his yeah. station tubes and the whole thing. So you so so you knew Steve was home because <laughs> every once in a while you'd be walking through there your house an and elephant. all of a sudden it would be it sounded like some sort of animal just being <laughs> sacrificed. <laughs> and my favorite part of that story is it was not until he moved out that he had been informed when he did that it was audible to the upper floors. I don't know if that's true. I, it, it, that, that, that's possibly true, but I, <laughs> I'm, sh I'm sure I would have told him. Yeah, right? With him living there. I don't, it makes I, I more can't, sense well, if he come up and pass him. Yeah, because we were friends. He would come up. He actually played Santa Claus one year for uh, our kids and stuff. Would that set you back? Uh, like 150 grand. <laughs> <laughs> Is that too much? Nope. I don't think so. I don't think you wanted to live there, don't you? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. He came up for the kids dressed as Santa. He came up for the kids dressed as Santa. That's he pretty great. Was, he was great. And he were the kids was, like, Steve oh, was, why isn't Steve here? He would love this. They're like, who's this gigantic Santa Claus? And it wasn't until Santa... He's like, he's like two Santa Clauses. <laughs> and I guess, I'm assuming it wasn't until Santa sneezed that the cat was out of the bag. That's right. And they went, oh, the, the, there's no beard Santa. Beard came off. Everything came off. <laughs> it was like when Barney uh, burps on The Simpsons. That's what the beard did. <laughs> uh... Okay, well, let's, let's, uh, how do you break, how do you, how do you, as a concerned father, Me. break the news <sighs> or deal with the news being, having been broken to the kids about the Santa Claus and we don't need to go into exactly. Well, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> they're six, they're six and four. What are you waiting for? <laughs> for, for my son to be like, that's you, daddy. <laughs> or that's Steve. Right. I can't, I'm not gonna. <laughs> no? No, I think he sort of gets it now. A six year old. Yeah, I think he's sort of onto it, mm -hmm. but not fully. I think he because he, he's at that point where like, do I say I don't believe, or do I say like like six of my friends told me he doesn't exist? There's no exist. chance they're watching this, by the way. No, they're I put them, <laughs> I put them right up in front of the uh, computer to a watch. A laptop. This. Yeah. Sitting in front they of all have their laptops. Every, every well, both my children have a laptop. My dog has a laptop. Baby's first laptop. Yeah. I think that's how they laptop. sell it. So um, yeah. So how about you? Where were you? I still believe in Santa. Yeah. Okay. Why? All right. No, I remember when I, uh, myself, being a good Jew, uh, heard some pounding and hammering, and I thought, Santa's here. This is incredible. I'm not going to miss him, not knowing that it would upset my father, who was uh, hard at work on the toy. Oh, and so did you walk in I on? came bursting out of the bedroom. Santa's here. I heard, I'm hearing pounding and hammering. And then there and then was. it's Dad and a bottle of scotch and a hammer. I have a Santa story. Do you? Here's my Santa story. All right. S uh, summertime. Sure. Uh, or... Not not anywhere near uh, 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 the holiday season, and my parents had in their like a little walk-in closet in their in their be bedroom, and then that was the way you got into the attic, right? So there's a little attic thing. So it was open, and there was like a ladder there, and I guess my dad was storing stuff up there or whatever, but he wasn't there at the time. Ah, and um, you have to be curious. And so I went up. Yeah. And sitting in the far corner of the attic, dark, but like, I guess a little light was coming. I, I you know, I, I kind of now I'm, I've made it a, this whole other thing, but um, was... Uh, Steve Agee. Steve Agee, just sitting there <laughs> masturbating <laughs> onto a Santa Claus beard. <laughs> um, and... No, and then I saw like a Santa costume just like kind of thrown on a box, but I, you could see that it was like Santa's beard and like the, you know, like thing. And so I thought Santa was dead in the attic. <laughs> I went down and I told my parents that I thought Santa was dead. He'd come to our house to die. Yeah. Now, I don't know how, how much of that is true right, and sure. how much of it is made up in my head, but I remember going into the attic and, because in, in my head now, I remember going down and being bawling and saying Santa's dead in the attic. Yeah. But I, I, that may... That might have been a writer's embellishment? Yeah, that might be... That might be uh, just uh, over time, I just made that shit up in my head. Yeah. But I do, I do remember seeing what I thought was... Uh, a and how did they explain and, the situation? Uh, sometimes Santa doesn't have uh, a chance to go to everybody's house, so sometimes Dad dresses like Santa. So they were still trying to cover for Santa. Sure. And it's summertime. Yeah. You know. So Dad wears that because Santa can't go everywhere. I think that's pretty solid. When the time comes, you might want to keep the tradition alive. Look, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm just like, um, it's sort of like, it's nothing like Skinner Box, but um, <laughs> I'm going to try to make sure my children believe in Santa until they, until, you know, they're like 65, until they retire. Can I make a suggestion? <laughs> Um, to, it's, uh, no. no. It's not too late. I, wait, I said no! <laughs> it's on the record. Just saying. He once again said no. Fine. All right, Being the ahead, great improviser that he is, <laughs> he just, once again said no. I'm just saying. I, it's make a not, suggestion. It's not too late to raise them Jewish. It's and, not? And you no. never have this problem. Wendy, so what do I have to do? Like, is there paperwork to fill out? What do I got to do? No. Nope. Just, just, I'll put a phone call in for you. Don't yeah. worry about it. By oh. the way, it's, it also means at some point they'll get a check, several of them, if things mm -hmm. go well. Mm -hmm. It's the one thing about the Jew. And who was bar mitzvah? Right. They can tell you the exact amount they made at their bar mitzvah, no matter what year. Really? Yeah. Ready? I could not do it. Seriously? Seriously. That's a whole disappointment and a total lie. What was I'm the sorry. Theme? What was the theme of your uh, bar mitzvah? No theme. No theme. These are all lies. 
Wait, his the theme, your theme was no theme. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Like that. My That's theme really was cool. atheism now. Wow. How is it that you don't remember, by the way? Because uh, you didn't get to open the checks yourself? No, I didn't get to open the checks. My, my folks kept that very separate from me. They didn't want me to know. I, to this day, I don't, I have a vague idea, but I don't have any sort of... So the stealing idea. from you began... Yeah, where did the money go? Did yeah. you get, where, did you have access to this money? Uh, no. I may have scratched open Because you ugly, didn't go to college, ugly, right? No. Nope. Yeah. I think, uh, to be quite honest, I think I may, I may have used that money. I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely concerned. That's why I have all these questions. I'm I was like, I where did the money go? I may have some of that money to purchase my first automobile. Not all of it, but some of it. Mine, for sure. What was your first automobile? Uh, 1992 Chevy Lumina. Austin Healey Sprite. 1974 LTD. And there we have it. 86 Pontiac Sunbird. Seriously? Yes. <clears throat> you went with the Pontiac Sunbird? It was given to me. Ah. It was a hand-me-down. Wow. <laughs> um, I didn't choose to buy it. Would you now, given the opportunity? Mm, it chose yes, you. I love that jalopy. Uh, this is a potentially more sensitive subject I'd like us to transition to. <sighs> Should we dim the lights? What do we do? I think, uh, I think you keep an open mind. Okay. <clears throat> answer as honestly as you can. I'll do the best I can. How comfortable are you discussing the murderous demon that lives in your butthole? Uh, bad Milo. I'm, I'm, uh, it's, uh, because it's a fictional uh, 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 story. Is it? I definitely responded to the character because uh, there was a lot of uh, similarities between my life mm -hmm. and my bowel movements sure. and uh, the character of Duncan. <laughs> um, but uh, what, what is the question? How comfortable are you discussing the murderous demon that lives in your bring it? Pretty comfortable. Okay. Because, I mean, I, there's <clears throat> been a moment in my life, too, where I certainly, like a lot of people, I believe, said the words out loud. I think someone craw something crawled up inside and died. Right. So I think you said it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we love them. Um, uh, no, I, I genuinely think you did. Yeah, no, I did. You've been doing, <laughs> forgive the expression, a shit ton of press uh, as of late for the Bad Milo right. that recently came, uh, uh, debuted on the VOD, the VOD, yeah. for, the, for the kids, and we yeah. hit some theaters October 4th. Yeah. In one interview, after uh, talking about all the hilarity that ensues, you said, and I quote, mm. what's nice about it is that I actually got to react and see the puppeteers, the guys who are controlling the character Milo. Mm and react in real ways in a scene. So if I raised my voice or yelled or if I say, come here, mm. you know, he's really reacting like an actual acting partner. So mm. A, to be clear, we're still talking about the uh, Muppet that crawls <laughs> in and out of your rectum, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I believe you. I believe that, that that's a genuine response and, and I'd like, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. All right, first of all. Yeah. The way you asked me that question seems like you're making fun of what I said. No! Are you not? No, no, no. Okay. okay. Oh, God, that's no. just That's just my paranoia. All right. <laughs> well, I'm All right. glad that's you asked. That's just me. No, I'm that's just me. I'm glad you asked, though. Well, I, that's, I, can't, I can't help but do that. That's who, that's who I am. I, I actually went there as an actor thinking, with the puppeteers there, quite frankly. Yeah. I mean, the last thing is definitely a joke, with it, but, the, but working with the puppeteers yeah. there... The, the the Milo has to become real for you. You can't do this. Taking it to, uh, if, that out of context, the, 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 what we're talking about is the difference between doing like CGI, yeah. working with like nothing, right. with like tennis balls or or just like a an X on a yeah. on a wall, yeah. or working with a practical puppet, which is one of the charming things or appealing things about this ass but uh, demon movie, is that the puppet is practical, and that's right. that's what's. That's what people seem to be enjoying about it. No, the it's, reviews are talking about it nonstop. It's a throwback to, yeah. you know, uh, monster movies before right. uh, everything was CGI. Before we started giving a shit, quite frankly, because I can't, the CGI just doesn't get me, ever. No, it doesn't. You feel disconnected. So what was really cool about it yeah. was this was, if you see the puppet, I don't know if you've seen a picture of it, but it kind of looks like E.T. ran into a pile of shit. <laughs> right? So... It, so it's this like really cool looking puppet, these big eyes, and the puppeteers, uh, I, and, I, and, I, and I think, well I said this in, in, in uh, other interviews, but I don't, I'm not sure they'd like to be called puppeteers, I think they or they don't like to call it a puppet, I think they like to call it a character. Sure. And they're very sensitive about it, I think. <clears throat> they 
they were trying to, you know, they were acting in a scene with me. So, so it wasn't like I was pretending somebody was doing something. If I yelled at the puppet, the puppeteer who was dressed in black would, right? And the guy working the face would make the puppet's face go, yeah. you know, and so. It was real. So it was real. Right. The moment was real. That's I was, I was, there was a dance that was happening between me and the puppeteers. Right. But well, I was, it was all with the, you know. That was the part that honestly I was fascinated by, and I'm sorry the uh, smart ass comment got in the way initially. It wasn't a smart ass comment. Yeah, it I'm, was. I'm. No, 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 it was. It was I, oh, it was. It wasn't to offend, but it was. <laughs> it was definitely, it was all definitely right. a smart ass comment for sure. But it was also my my way of just sort of broaching the subject I, because um, I, I I have had it with the fucking CGI, and you know I do love. First of all, the, the the Muppets are are extraordinary, and the guys who make them alive have been the reason for thirty something years. Right. And so, acting in a scene where it's dramatic and scary and weird and real, it, that was the part that, that that fascinated me. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's because there's laughs involved for the audience, but you are playing it real in the movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean that that was the that was the kind of uh, exciting thing about doing it, and right. I, that I was hoping that we we could achieve on some level, right? Which was treat this like it's really treat treat the gigantic ass monster that would couldn't possibly come out of my ass or go back up it, and everything that's going on as <laughs> dramatically as possible and right. real as possible. So as if it, as, you know, as if it as if something like that was really happening. Right. Because that, that's the only way it's going to work. As opposed to winking about it the whole time. Yeah, which is funny for a minute. Yeah. I would think. Peter. Uh, Gabriel. Stormar? Stromare. Stromare. I got to know I gotta know a little bit more about your experience working with him. Have you worked with him? No, I've just been fascinated since Fargo. He's. By he's what is this guy? He's awesome. Yeah. He's a, he's a kook. He's like, but he's totally you know, about the work and the character and making it as interesting as possible, but he's basically a guy who, he just wants to kind of, you know, uh, uh, keep it fresh. So he'll, he'll just add certain ticks or he'll just throw in things to try to throw curveballs to throw you off balance. But if you're open to kind of going, dancing with that and going with it, uh, then it, then it makes for a fun uh, acting partner. And if you're not, and if you're not, I, I'm I'm, sh I'm sure you would get thrown off or be intimidated because he does take it to weird places or he'll start to say weird things just to just to do it, just to kind of. Because you're knows. sensing it's real. He's doing it to keep him fresh for himself. Yeah. Right. Which is always cool. Yeah, it, it's it's totally cool. I mean, you know, he. I, I don't know. All I can say is when I worked with him, he was delightful. Yeah. And yeah. fun. I've I've just thought the world of his work every single time. He's really cool. Yeah. And he, you know, and, and his choices are are um, Minority Report. He's the surgeon that takes mm -hmm. Cruz's eyes out or whatever. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. Just, and he has a snot drip constantly throughout it. Yeah. Which was some crazy choice I'm sure he yeah. made as you're describing it. Yeah. He's just fascinating every time. He's and fun. the the empty, soulless cool of his character in Fargo was so the best. The best. He stole the movie. Yeah, to me, which was impossible because didn't everyone's brilliant in that film. Right, right. And I'm he, gonna burp. And he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't say much at all, did he? And the whole. I don't think movie. he said. I think he said. Go to Pancake House. Is that what he said? <laughs> well, among other things, but yes. Very few things. Very few lines. Um, and what a cast! Also, Gillian Jacobs, Warburton, Stephen Root, Kumail, Mary Kate Nanjiani, Place, Stephen Root, all of which have uh, been. Uh, Toby Huss. Oh, the great Toby Huss. Do you know Toby? I love Toby Huss because I love Artie, the strongest man in the world. Pete and Pete. Yes, Pete from wow. Pete and Pete. Yeah. That's my Toby Huss reference. Yeah. He's the best. Yeah. And crazy fun. Talk about an amazing improviser. Have you ever seen him in um, Reno 911, the, uh, the movie? I did not see the movie. Ridiculously good. His just rented just to see him do his thing. Right on. Uh, <coughs> can you write that down, please? Because I actually do. I'll I love we you. love him. So I he, have it on DVD. Anything he's done that would be recommended, I want to see. Oh my god, he's so funny in that movie, and he's you know it's like two or three scenes. Yeah, so funny. Uh, we've had uh, some of your uh, compadres on the show. Well, How we, did you pronounce Joe's name last name? 
Uh, I think a couple of different ways. Yeah. yeah. You go, you went Latruglio, and then you went Latrulio. I did. Yeah. I tried them both on. What did he say was right? And then I just went to Jolo. Jolo. I'm comfortable now with Jolo. Right. Yeah. I don't think Joey he's Stacks. so sweet. He did, I don't think he corrected me no matter what I said. Sweetheart. Right? Well, if you get beneath the sweetheart, he's, he's, just, he's, just, he's just a... Uh, to set you on fire. Hard ass. He's just, he's Satan himself. <laughs> no, he, Joe's the sweetest guy in the world. Best guy in the world. You guys have known each other a while. Uh, Joe yeah. and I have known each, uh, ne known each other since 1988, 89. This is part of school? This is part of the Tisch program at and the NYU? Right, NYU, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's where I met everybody from the state. Right. It is amazing that they were all going there at the exact same time, and then this is what comes from it. And then everyone uh, has a career. Are you all aware of the ridiculous nature of the statistics alone behind this? The sti yeah, I, I, I think about it a lot. I think about how <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, crazy it is that everybody is working and, you know, paying their bills uh, in this town, which yeah. is a very difficult town to survive in. Yeah, and in some cases, uh, most cases, well-known and by their fans uh, who seem to be kind of rabid, which is great, which is amazing. Yes, and I'm surprised nobody's dead yet. Yeah, let's talk about that, because I've lost a few bets, mm -hmm. and I'm not terribly happy about it. Who there, are you going there for? There was an over-under. Who's going for us? On uh, Showalter. Showalter. There was an over-under. It's not on a bad bet. Oh, I've, my money's always been on Lennon. Lennon? You think Lennon's always. going? Always. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. when? Yeah. I say Kevin Allison. Ooh, yeah. risk. Yeah. Risk Kevin Allison. I mean, that guy, that guy, the things he's doing. That's true. You never know. That's true. He's or me. A, he, <laughs> he's the only one I'm not familiar with. I'm out of the loop on the Kevin Allison. Kevin Kevin uh, runs a, the, a theater in uh, New York, and he uh, does his podcast called Risk, which is uh, ah. people come on and um, play Risk and talk about play Risk and mm -hmm. talk about like uh, uh, you know things that they wouldn't normally talk about. Right. That's it's, why I haven't done the show. Uh huh. Because he keeps asking me, and I'm like, I don't want to come on and talk about things I don't want to talk about because <laughs> I don't want to talk. I want to talk about. It. <laughs> <clears throat> um, which I said in an email finally. Ah. Which I didn't like doing. Yeah, you're not comfortable with emails. I don't like emails. Yeah. Okay, uh, let, let's discuss it a little bit. I think everyone will benefit you mostly. What is it? Uh, it seems cryptic and not real. No, I just don't like that all of a sudden it was uh, like, like I, and I know it's taken years, but like nobody calls. You don't talk on the phone anymore. Like everybody's got to talk through email. And if you don't respond right away, then you're the bad guy. I don't fucking want to answer an email if, like every time somebody sends me an email. You don't want to be that available. No. Right. There's a reason you had a voice answering machine on your home phone. Yes. Okay. I'll call when I want to. If, unless you say to me, call me back. You need to, we need to talk. Right. I got to fucking call you back? <laughs> or I got to, I'm sorry, I got to email you? Right. Or you're, I'm going to hurt your feelings? Texting is fun for you, too. I don't, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. like it. Yeah. It sounds like I'm doing a bit, but I don't No, like you're it. not. You're not doing a bit. That's why I, I, I was curious if you would share some of this. Because, you know, know. Janine Garofalo, we interviewed her in New York for the film, for the film, and... Um, I think it's film. She refuses... <laughs> I, I don't know. No? I, I thought it was phlegm. Is it phlegm? Phlegm? phlegm. I like phlegm. phlegm. Have you been to Spain? Because they won't accept film in Spain. Uh, she refuses to use email, period. Just will not open an account, will not have any... Really? Yep. That's, that's much more extreme than me. I, you have to get, because you have to communicate with people. Right, right. You have to do it. Yeah. But I don't like the new rules, the unwritten rules. How are you if I text or uh, fax you a call sheet? Are you okay with that? I don't, I don't know. I fax. I, don't, I, have, I, I think we have a fax machine in our house, I think. Really? I think. Right? Isn't that like a printer is now like a fa printers and fax machines? Aren't they the same thing? Yeah, they're no. copy. Yeah, it's like copy, it printer, up. scanner, fax. It's a scanner. Yeah. A scanner is just a fax machine, right? Sure. Yeah. It's the same shit. Right? It's the same shit. Are you Amish? I'm confused. <laughs> I'm not a Luddite, but I am like somebody Luddite. who... Luddite. Where's the thing that drops? Lud We've been yeah. waiting 184 shows for the Luddite word to be used. That's fantastic. I, I, I don't... I, I like computers. I appreciate them. I appreciate email. I appreciate texting. I appreciate all that shit. Right. I just... Don't appreciate it. Don't feel like I need to respond to everything right away. And, or feel the pressure that I have to respond it's to It's the pressure you don't appreciate. Yeah. More than anything else. Like the etiquette. Like there's etiquette right. now. Right. But who, when did you, who invented it? It's just it's fairly new, right? Mm -hmm. how, it, how, well, it's not that new. Well, no, know. but it's, it's up to the individuals to 
to somehow create a non-spoken protocol and etiquette. No one actually says, hey, look, uh, Ken, I'm going to email you. Uh, I'm just curious, how comfortable are you responding within a day, a week? That conversation never happens. No. I email you, and if you don't respond, I go, hey, fuck, and why so, not? So let, me, so let me ask you. So, you, so we, we exchange emails about yes. doing a show. Yes. And then part of the email was... Hey, take a look at the... To, right. So, so I didn't... Respond. Respond. And I didn't know what to make of that. And, and then after I didn't respond for a while, I was like, oh, shit, I didn't respond. <laughs> and now how do I, now do I have to apologize for not responding? And then also say, it's nothing, but let's just talk in person. <laughs> and I should have done all of that. No. But I was like, I'm, I don't, I don't want to type that much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it comes down to for me, too. I don't want to type that much. I just don't want to type that I don't much. type fast. <laughs> Did you uh, take typing in school? Yeah. I took typing in school because I was told it was an easy A. Yeah. yeah. I almost got kicked out. Of typing? Of typing. Because? Because, I don't know, I was being a wise ass or something. So it wasn't just that class? And missing class. <laughs> <laughs> I was a horrible student, by the way. You were? Just horrible. How bad? I was Did bored. Did you barely get by? I, yeah, yeah. I was bored beyond belief. There was a couple teachers who actually took interest, and then they had me right in the pocket. And then all of the others just were doing a job, and then today we're going to learn. And I tuned right out. Yeah. And I, you know, that's that's how the class clown thing happened. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I, I went to I went to college, I went to NYU, and and went there for four years. I don't remember what I took other than meeting the people in the state, and acting classes I was taking because that's what I was interested in. So every every other course that yet was required to take, I don't. The only thing that pops into my mind is like I, I, I learned about apes. Anything in particular? No, I don't remember. <laughs> they like bananas. Well, we were like we were like not apes, but we were like you know like primates, like they were prime, like we were like we we were all we all come from. We might have. We may have walked uh, similarly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what I remember. The the, the, the or don't remember well. the, the general ed classes uh, that you have to take in order to get the yeah. 101 things. Yeah. Uh, I have whole sections of, I'm sure my family and I sat down to eat almost every night. I don't remember any of it. No. I had a couple. But there was I don't remember. 15 years of meals I should remember. I sit down with my kids, or I try, and like I feed like dinner every night, and sometimes like they'll just eat at the table and we're running around doing shit, and sometimes we try to eat together. But I can't even remember what I did with my parent. Like, did we sit down together? Right. I don't remember. How is that? But it's not, we're not the only ones. I'm gonna go around the room. Dr. Chen, you had your mom in town last month. You guys talk about how fun it was when you were young to sit around the dinner table and? No, that was a resounding no. That was a Dr. Chen no. Sammy? Family dinners nearly every night. Fam but you, the folks are watching, so there's a little bit of pressure. Same time? Say, uh, yeah, just about. And you remember all of them? Pretty, pretty well, yeah. That's a stone cold lie. Yeah. Jamie? We, my mother never cooked. My mother, my, um, my father wasn't around, so then my mother had a, had a, had a career, so she never, so right. she was never around to cook, but my grandmother cooked for me. Right. And did time. you sit down and eat with her, or did she just no, like No, she would just like, cook, yeah, she would just like cook like and be like, yeah, and then pyramid. be like, here's your food. And then, yeah, and yeah. then I would go like watch TV and eat. But even no matter what the circumstance was, the issue at hand here is do we remember these times? And Sam, I think, is the only one who can visualize sitting well, down. Well, I remember my I remember aunt Ellen's. was also a really good cook, and she's like, I would always want to go over her house because and, and eat with her. And like we would, I would sit like with my, like she would cook us dinner, and I would sit with my uncle, and she would, we would actually sit and eat together. That's what I, that's my family. I guess what I'm trying to get at is to make sure that this isn't some sort of matrix situation. It might be. It might be. Okay. It, it could be. You're right. It seems like it is. The movie made sense, right? <laughs> so the first one. Yes. I don't know why I was divulging so much information there, too. I don't. I felt like it was like a therapy <laughs> session. Like, I was divulging so much information. Like, well, this is why. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you got caught being honest. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, working what do you want to know about? with David Wayne in particular on the, on the things mm -hmm. like the Wonderlust. I, I, uh, that's I was... that's when we talked a lot uh, yes. for the first time. That's when yeah. we sort of. I mean, we met at uh, Beth's birthday party, somebody's birthday party once, right. and then I saw you where. Well, I of course was uh, of course everyone understands why a part of the DVD special features commentary. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You uh, and you, you were there, and you Paul did. Paul Rudd, me, you, David, Paul, David, and then you did. And me, of course, because uh, well, my work in the film. 
That's right. Yeah, there's this. You, were cut, you didn't make the final cut, and I, we apologize about that. <laughs> well, yeah, in a similar way to Kevin Costner and uh, very the, big, the chill. big chill. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Uh, completely cut. Yeah. From the film. Completely cut from. The there's film. one difference, which I think we should probably share. Yes. I was not uh, part of the filming process either. You were not. We didn't. We didn't shoot you. you in didn't the, get we, to we, me. We didn't, no, not we a ran out day. of days. <laughs> we ran out of days and lines to be yeah. said. I mean, I was. I think David. I had done something for Children's Hospital, but David had been a, a <clears> guest <throat> on this show, and he's. And that's when he came up with the nutty idea, which I thought was pretty fun. Which was you. You came on, and uh, it, it was uh, uh, the commentary. So you. We just kept throwing to different uh, uh, actors: right. uh, Woody Allen, Alan Arkin. Uh, 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 walk in anybody, anybody, and and you did you did them, and you talked about the film as if you were. Um, it was pretty silly. Part part of the making of the film. <laughs> yeah, and as one of the authors of the film. Right. Was that a little annoying for you? Not for me. Oh, okay, I, I cool. Loved it. Uh, um, what is your writing process? I'm forever fascinated because everyone seems kind of different uh, in specifics. How do you feel about a first draft? Is it important to just throw it out because you know you're going to rewrite the fuck out of it, or do you painstakingly take a great deal of time with that first draft? What, what is your... Uh... Uh, it's different. I mean, ultimately, just for me, or are you talking about when yeah. I write with a partner? Either. Both. Well, ultimately, it's best to just get the bones of a story out, and then you can change 90% of it, but one, it's, there's something really beautiful and magical about uh, printing out mm. the first draft of something. Mm. That is a story from beginning to end, and then taking a week away from it, and then like opening up and reading and being like, "Oh, that's good. Oh, that's shit. Oh, but oh, oh I know where that can go. Um, I know how to fix that." Uh, so, so the, in my opinion, the best thing to do is to you know kind of come up with an idea, outline it, and then bang it out, and don't think about don't think about like I don't know exactly what the thing is. Don't overthink anything. Just write. Just throw throw up on onto the page until you get to the end of it. And then print it out, and then hold it, and yeah. be like, "This is ultimately the goal, and here it is, and this is what it feels like, and this is the way it's very tactile, and you're there, and, and then you go back and you can change it for you know the next year, two years, however, three months, however long you right. want to spend on it." And you're, uh... but my writing process with David is slightly different than my is very different than not slightly than my writing process with with uh, Erica. Right. Um, David and I. Uh, I mean, we, we we basically both, you know, bang out scripts as fast as we can. But like with David, because we were on a sketch group together, the way we would write sketches is we'd sit in a room and we'd be like, at, we'd act it out. And David was a faster typist, type he was a, a better typist than I was, so he would type things out, and we would act it out, and we would have the piece at the end of our meeting. Mm. So that's how we write our scripts. We sit in a room together and look at a monitor and write it together. Look and at a monitor? We look at it, I, he looks at his computer screen and then there's a monitor that I look at and so I'm, we're looking at the same thing and we type, we basically write the whole script together in the oh, same wow. room. So like we sit like this and we talk to each other and there's a monitor here for me and he's looking at his computer and we write the whole thing together. The monitor, so that I'm clear, is what he's typing. Yes, yeah, so shows up on your yeah, monitor. Yeah, so, so I'm not sit, hovering over his shoulder. Gotcha, his great. <clears throat> so then... I thought, are they watching the movie before they write it? What's on the no, monitor? No, no, no. So we, so we bang out an outline and we do that. Eric and I bang out an outline and then uh, I'm we've not sure learned, that's our business. You're married. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, we're open here. We can talk about anything. Sure. Um, until it gets on ABC and then they, they bleep some of this stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've learned over the course of our kind of discovering how we write best together is that I drive her fucking bananas and by like throwing out different lines. I'm like, oh no, maybe he says, oh no, no, oh, he could say something like, and I start to, and she's like, Shh, just let me write something down. So we've learned that we bang out a really specific outline and then she goes away and writes her pass of it and then hands it to me and then I do my pass of her pass and then I give it back to her and right. we go back and forth and then we, know, and then we don't drive each other crazy. Right, well that's pretty Or cool. uh, I, I don't drive her crazy. I have a similar uh, thing with uh, my writing partner Jason Antoon on the things we, we work on in that. Um, I love Jason. I, I, yeah? Yeah, oh, he yeah. was in the 10. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're big Antoon fans here. Um, did you, which it's Jamie true. just made a hysterical uh, photo mashup. Did you see Behind the Candelabra yet? 
I uh, just saw the tip. I mean, a little bit of it. <laughs> well done. Thank you. <laughs> no, I saw that. I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. So you remember the scene when they're they go into get out of a limo or something and walk into just a random porno. Uh, yeah. 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 And they're both wearing these giant fur coats. Yes. And it's kind of ridiculous, which Jamie was saying was the uh, Chinchilla Brothers or something. <laughs> and she had just received a photo from Mantoon with his friend uh, Sebastian. Do you know his friend Sebastian? No. Anyways, they were both Maybe. at Costco and they were selling these giant like rugs, like rugs, like but fur rugs. But they draped themselves thick. in these so rugs. So they draped themselves, and she did a mashup of the behind the candelabra chinchilla <laughs> guys. Oh, nice! And the two guys from uh, yeah. Uh, a mashup is a thing that, that you do in the on the internet. <laughs> you take pictures mm -hmm. and you kind of put them together, and it's sort of like they're similar, right? That's, that's exactly what that's a I mean, photo I collage. A photo collage. Sure. Um, and so Antuna and I do a thing where I will maybe like you be a little more animated, and he just needs to write a little bit. So does he and go? And I should calm the fuck down. Yeah, go go in the and other then room. He does a pass, and I do a pass. And then, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. But th uh, that's th so that's one way that uh, I do it with one partner, and then it's and then. Well, I, you and David like to get up <laughs> and be animated because you wrote sketches together like this. Yeah. And that like when we did Wanderlust. Yeah. You know when we would hit a wall or something, I'd say to David, how how would how would Albert Brooks. What would Albert Brooks say in this? And then he would start doing his Albert Brooks, and then all of a sudden it would, he would come up with like a great joke, and we'd, I'd be like, "That's it, okay, put that in." And so we would. It's crazy. And sometimes that. I would say, "How would Woody Allen say it?" And he <clears throat> and he would start doing his Woody Allen, and it would it would it would break open these like wow. creative kind of jokes or ideas, and then it, it thrust us forward. I'm, but I wouldn't do that with my wife. No, because her Albert Brooks is horrible. A terrible Albert Brooks. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, if I may, please, Ken. This next question <laughs> comes from a fan of the show. We ask that they write in questions randomly. Uh, okay, so, all right, sorry. No, I like that. Um, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the, about the burning love, because uh, aside from the devastation with the award nonsense, um, I'm ha I'm very happy the Children's Hospital won an Emmy. As long as it's one of the two shows. I mean, you know, there are other shows nominated. It could have been one of them. Beyonce's Beyonce. halftime show is not in our category. Would have killed you. What right? does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't take any of the fun from away that that <laughs> awful fucking thing was nominated. No. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's talk about. But, but be, just, sure, I just sure. want to go back at one point. If we may. Did I say enough nice things about David Wayne? I, oh, yeah. Okay. There's no way not to. Right. Other, other than the impressions, you still, yeah, no. Best. Everyone, uh, you, there's no way not to love him, honestly. Yeah. Even Sweet. with the card tricks. Yeah. <laughs> Even with his incessant, incessant card tricks, yeah. Yeah, but which, which are, he, I love the look on his face when he's doing the various hand manipulation. He's trained himself to look away. Mm -hmm. And you got, I got to get caught up in, in where he's looking and what he's thinking and what he wants me to really look at is right. what he's doing with the cards. But he, he's really worked <clears throat> hard at training himself not to look down, mm -hmm. and it looks like a guy trying really, really, really hard, hard not to look down. Yeah. <laughs> That's his angle. Yes, it is. That's his angle. That's how he gets you. Um, the creation of The Burning Love was uh, you and the missus were watching uh, these Bachelor, Bachelorette-type shows. Yes. And... Um, and it became an idea for maybe a, a short video, perhaps, at first. And then it was you, according to the dossier, who said, you know, maybe this is more of a thing, like a series. And then the idea was, let's shop it around. That this Somebody became interested in Red Hour and, and so forth, and Yahoo seemed like a comfortable fit. Yes. Most of that is true. All of that is true. Um, and then you're shooting the thing, and, you know, you, the, the success from Children's Hospital to go from a web series to... Adult Swim or Cartoon Network, aren't those the same things? Adult Swim is a, a, a block of programming on Cartoon Network. Yeah, it's late night. It's, it's late night Cartoon Network. Oh, okay. It's your TGIF. Oh, nice. If now I can wrap I my brain around. I would be more of a Nick at Night. Yeah, it's Nick at Night. It's Nick at Night. Thank you. Between us? We got it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Kenny? <laughs> yeah, enough, Kenny, for God's sake. Speaking of which, I think we might be mid-roll time if you want to punch that fucker up. What do we got? Mid-roll. A little mid-roll from the Hulu Plus folks. So you don't think the, 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 the you who, uh, the, the, the uh, Burning Love or the Children's Hospital is on the Hulu Plus? We don't think. You don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's on a need to care basis for you. I don't care. It's out there. 
Yeah, I, that's not my department. No, leave me the fuck alone with this shit. I did it. I handed it in to people who were supposed to fucking put it out there. And they do. And they do. How else do you get nominations? That's right. Somebody put it up. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Would you mind if I did this, though? No. I don't want to take away from... Is there any way you can do it after I leave? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Somebody put a foothold in this moment right now in the show. And then we'll come... You like watching this show, so you must like quality entertainment. Go to Hulu Plus for all your television and movie needs. Hulu Plus has, listen to me now, it has the world's best digital collection of entertainment content. Did you hear what I just said? It's the most convenient way to binge on whole seasons of your favorite programs and discover new ones as well, you son of a bitch. Use Hulu Plus on connected TVs, game consoles, Blu-ray players, Roku, Apple TV, PC, or your smartphone or tablet on demand at all times. We have too many ways to watch now. That's what's clear to me in this ad. There are too many ways. But since you have so many ways, why not do it with Hulu Plus? Watch hits like New Girl, The Mini Project, along with some reality TV, like your, uh, your shows. Like the classic real world is really what I didn't want to say. It's already <laughs> inexpensive enough, but you don't have to pay right now. You can try it for free if you are a fan of the show. Don't tell anyone this, but if you go to HuluPlus.com Hulu slash chat, it's a great time to get all this stuff for free. Great way to watch TV and support free? This, this very program right now. I'm talking about free, as Ken is kind enough to help me. Uh, it's uh, the best way to let them know that we sent you and to keep us in front of you for free. There's no reason to not to try it out. I guarantee you're going to love this one, guys and gals. Get the free trial at HuluPlus.com slash chat. That's HuluPlus.com slash C-H-A-T-A. -H -H and start watching TV like you always dreamed of doing. Uh, wet Hot American Penis. I want to talk wet about... Wet Hot American... Is it say penis? No. <laughs> um, let's talk about that. Yeah. Let's talk about Wet Hot American Penis. All right. Because everyone's been dying for a sequel. Yeah, everybody wants They've to know. They've been asking all these years. Oh, oh And Americans. you finally came up with a title, and I'm excited <laughs> as hell that Wet it's Hot Wet American Hot American Penis. penis. Uh, Wet Hot American... Um, Can I get you some water or anything? Summer, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've got a giant... Toss it. i got a giant... Oh. <laughs> you giant thing right here. Don't toss that. Um, what about it? Wet Hot American Summer. Uh, well, first, how about the live read at Sketchfest in San Francisco? Fun. The, kind of a reunion thing. It was nice. Our very own Sam Levine involved. Yes, he was fabulous. Uh, oh, please, um, thank, thank you for being there, Sam. It was my absolute pleasure. It thank was a lot of fun. You were terrific. Please. Mm -hmm. You were terrific. Well, thank you. Yes. Do you do you like doing the stuff live on stage? Do you miss the being on stage? Isn't that how the state started? The state did start with doing live sketch shows, and uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I like it, I enjoy it. The, uh, the answer to the several questions you asked mm -hmm. are, uh, I do like doing yes, stuff no, on yes. stage. <laughs> yes, no, yes. Um, I miss it, yeah, I miss it, but I don't like, uh, I, I don't- Look for an outlet. Yeah, I don't, desire, I don't like crave it, I don't have to do it. Right. But it's fun to do. Right. Um, Okay, so uh, uh, finishing up with the, with the burning love, the idea of going from a web series to a uh, broadcast television show. Yeah. That's, you guys have made it look easy between Children's Hospital and Burning Love. Right. Uh, I need people to know right now, damn it, that it's unbelievably difficult. It's not easy. No. It's not easy, and, um, and, and, and doing a web, you know, like people like, you know, want to know, what the what the formula is, and I think I can't speak for Cordry and 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 uh, Children's Hospital, but it it seems sort of similar. I, I would say the Burning Love formula is um, kick around for about twenty years, mm -hmm. uh, during which time the internet becomes uh, a viable option to do uh, experiment. Content. And uh, while you're kicking around for twenty years, make friends with people who start to become successful. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, then be nice to them sure. over the years. Key. Be nice to them. Key. Ask those people to work for absolutely nothing. Right. Make sure that some of those people are people like Paul Rudd or Jennifer Aniston or Marlon Ackerman or Kristen Bell. Names like, you can put right. on a marketing right. display. Then uh, have, make sure that they say yes. Work around uh, their schedules. And, uh, and then... Uh, and then Write something um, that uh, that people seem to want to watch, and allow those people to be funny. And allow those people. To I'm be sorry. What was step number four again? I don't I'm remember. Just trying to get the stand. Uh, you have it on tape. Oh, you're right. Or is this film? Are we filming this? You're right. Digital. It's your HD. This isn't film. It's HD digital. 
You were told film? I was told film. Yeah, we got your writer. There's a few things we need to discuss. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, the kicking around for 20 years part. <laughs> Not to be underplayed, and I'm glad you mentioned it. Right, that I'm old. No, that the, the, the only way you're going to go from a web series to a broadcast cable or otherwise network is if you know what the fuck you're doing. At some point, you've got to know what the fuck you're doing. Yes. And be able to corral the incredibly funny people that you, right. that you cast uh, all the time. We shot season one of Burning Love in eight days. Jesus. It was three hours of content. We shot season two of Burning Love, uh, season two and three, which was 260 pages of non-improv, just, just text, written stuff, and then probably add on another 50% of like improv uh, onto that, so another 130 pages of improv in 18 days. So we shot 15 to 20 pages a day, and we made our days 12-hour days. You did? Yeah. So basically what we did was we, people got there, yeah. As soon as somebody was ready, we put them in front of the camera and we started rolling and I wouldn't yell cut unless we ran out of, like, video. The digital cartridge. Unless they said we rolled out. Yeah. And I would say, okay, cut, powder everybody up, or how long will it take to powder everybody up? Right. All right, keep, roll the cameras again. Do you wear choppers when you direct? Do I wear choppers? Or are they joppers? The pants, the white... Choppa choppa? What? Oh, oh, <laughs> yes, I do, you know, I have the big... <laughs> I work, no, but you know what I do? Powder do? them up! I, uh, I have a little timer on my iPhone that uh, when it runs out, it has that little quacking sound. Mm. Wanna, 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 wanna. And I make a deal with my crew that if they uh, tell me they're going to be ready in 10 minutes, if they stick to that, I will be done with, my, with the actors and working with the actors and shooting everything I need to shoot in 10 minutes. And if we're all honest with each other, uh, uh, then we'll get through the day and we'll get all these pages done and it'll be fun and it'll be, you know, we'll be moving fast, but it'll be fun. And I set a timer and I have a timer next to the monitors and um, I race the clock during every take. Did you invent this process? I don't know. Did someone tell you about it before? No, that's what I do. You invented it for you. I didn't ben, Still ben Stiller, who produced it, came by one night and he's like, what, what are you doing? And I'm like, I time my takes. I, I, I time how much time I have for, otherwise I would lose track because I like working with actors. So I like, I, if, I wasn't, if I didn't have a timer there, I would talk to the actors and be like, that's great, Let me, let's try to do this and let's try, and, and I would get into, yeah. and time would just fly by because I wouldn't think about time. But if I, have, if I have a timer there with these big numbers that are ticking down. And a waiting duck. And a waiting duck that drives everybody crazy if it goes off, so when I catch it, everybody's happy about it. Uh, I get all the material I want. Um, because it's really am ambitious, the schedule you've put forth. It's crazy, because, you know, what, what do you normally shoot in a day? On a normal, on a, on, a, on a civilized project. Three to seven pages? Yeah. On, on like, on a movie, you shoot two to three pages, four pages, maybe. Right. right. On a TV show, seven pages. We shot 15 to 20 pages a day for 18 days straight. With no money for anything. With no money. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And then how long do you give yourself to edit two seasons worth? Uh, we didn't have a lot of time to edit. Um, I think every episode had maybe a week and a half or two weeks. They had, uh, no, less than that. Uh, no, every no every episode. I'm sorry. Every episode had four to five days, four days, four or five days to, to put together. And the episodes are only uh, every episode was 13 minutes. Right. Still, that's pretty fucking crazy. Um, we like to invite the audience in to ask questions uh, of you. They, they do so by writing them in a series of five rapid-fire questions. They're this or that, Coke or Pepsi, no correct answer. We call these a Tweet Five. Tweet Five, Tweet Five, Tweet Five forever now. Thank you, Dave Keckner. Uh, He's got a beautiful voice. He really does. Oh, my God, a yeah. voice of an angel. Well, an angel that spent a few days in a bar. Did he bring those birds? <laughs> yes, he brought the birds. They travel with him. Yeah. They travel with Which him? Which we were a little frightened by. I'm not sure. going to lie to you. Uh, take out an eye. Could take out an eye. It could take out an eye. Didn't for insurance purposes. Thank God. And the underwriter listening. From Facebook, Jesse Jackson, not the one you're thinking. <clears throat> These are your five questions. The accountant? Again, no. So I'm thinking of Jesse He's Jackson, an accountant. the accountant. Yeah. 
Uh, if you're audited, I'll stand by you. <laughs> Jesse Jackson, <laughs> the accountant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> if you audited. <laughs> Never did them before. All right, crystal clear to everyone. Uh, funnier role, catering team leader or homosexual demon? Uh, funnier role? That was the question. Or funner. Funnier. Funnier. Uh, 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 caterer. Better sheriff for Vinny, Don Lamb or Keith Mars? Better sheriff for Vinny? Well, Don Lamb, because he's dead, right? He Hello. got he got killed, what right? What are we talking about? Yeah. You don't know what they're talking nope. about. Better insults. Veronica Mars or Lizzie Kaplan? Better insult? Better insults. Oh, better... Uh, better insults. Uh, Veronica, oh. Veronica Mars, you see? He's tie. Tie. So tie. It's choice. It's both, tie. It's, it's, a, tie. A, it's a tie. It's a tie. Writing or directing? R writing or directing? Uh, mm. Directing. Okay. At least you were honest. Directing. What do you mean at least I was honest? That, that's the lead? Like what? Like everything else was a disappointment with that answer? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> at least you were honest. The very least. We got a little honesty out of you. Finally. The rest of it. So it'd be an hour and 12 hard minutes. <laughs> soup or crackers? I repeat, soup or crackers? It's super, it's super crackers. Super crackers. Super crackers. Right. And so I can't choose. It's just super crackers. Yeah. <laughs> What is that? It is super crackers. There's, like no, super there's no and or are. It's super crackers. <laughs> oh, I like it. Yeah. I don't know what it means, but I like it a you lot. You should watch Party Down. Sure. Yeah, you should tune into that. You, you would, would like know. that show. <sighs> Why do you go, ah. Everyone loves that show. I've not seen it. <sighs> I mean, everyone. love of cock. <laughs> Why? Why not? <laughs> well, if you'd told me, watch it for the love of cock, now I've got a reason. All right, yeah, then yeah, watch yeah. it for the love of cock. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in. All right. Uh, you did so well. I'm going to go right to the next tweet. Five without Dave Koechner. Team uh, Bart. Cock. <laughs> team Bart. <laughs> cock. Team Bart. Uh, this one from Cameron Harrison. It's, well, you know what that is? It's falsetto. Is it what is. what he's doing. <laughs> yes. I never. Uh, super Crackers. <laughs> the first one. <laughs> super Crackers. The answer, uh, the answer is yes. Tamara G or Julie? Tamara G or Julie? Julie. Please. What are we talking about? Julie. David Wayne or Rob? Tamar G's fabulous, but I mean, Tamar. Yeah. I mean, Julie, Julie is the, bat she's the bachelorette. And if I throw in Tamara G. <laughs> no, it's tougher no, for No, that's you. nice. David Wayne or Rob Thomas. Why even? David a, Wayne or what Rob kind of a Thomas. What question is that? For what? Exactly. Dinner? Sex? Somebody I'm going to borrow money from? <clears throat> Rob Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica Mars, TV show or movie? Veronica Mars, TV show or movie? Both, right? They both exist. I don't understand the question. <laughs> I think maybe your preference. Uh, have you shot the movie yet? The movie's shot. It's in a can. What? They're editing it. It's canned. It's weird that they didn't ask me to reprise my uh, award-winning turn. Is it weird and was it award-winning? I, I you know what? It what was award award did it was not even award-worthy. <laughs> That's what it was. That's what it was. Uh, yeah. You know, a, 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 a movie because it's uh, coming out. There we go. Oh, I don't know what to, I don't no, know that's good answer. answer that and lastly, that. save the children or get laid. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That's the correct answer. Uh, uh, tell me about shooting the Veronica Mars movie, if you don't mind. Well, basically, what they did is they would get a camera, right, and they put film in it. Sure. They they had these they guys. Did they put film in they it? They put film. Film, film, film. They may have put video in it. <laughs> but they lit it right. essentially the same way. Sure. These guys who knew how to light things. And, uh, and then there was a director there. Did and you understand? Then in front I of stood in front of the camera. You did? Yeah. And oh. they gave me lines to say. And then essentially uh, I said them. And then we had lunch, really nice lunch, <laughs> catered. And then uh, by the time the day was done, I signed this thing and they let me go. Did you first hear about it from the um, <coughs> Kickstarter campaign or did that not make its way? Past your, uh, Did I hear about the, the Veronica, Veronica Mars, Mars movie, movie being made? Yeah, yeah I heard it, uh, about it through, because I know that they were trying to do it, but I didn't know it was really happening until all of a sudden there's, there was this like, out of nowhere, like they made $3 million in a, a two days or something like that. Yeah. Hey, we're funded. We, we've been trying for a few years. But I didn't know I was going to be in it. Really? Yeah. Until? Until they called me up and said, w will, you do, will you do a little something See, in it? See, they were smart enough not to email you. They knew to call. They called. Yeah. No, I got an email. 
<laughs> Did you? Yeah, but then I call, and then I called and, Do and you, spoke to spoke to somebody. I heard I heard a human voice. Right? Do your people and everyone has to have them? Do your people know not to bother you with this email nonsense? Well, that that's one of the things. If we want, you want to get back into this, uh, I they I'll, I'm sent I'm sent auditions or things to consider or or you know just business stuff now in emails and sometimes I don't even get a phone call. So like I miss shit. Yeah. Because I don't look at, like, I don't, I don't look at all my emails right away. So all right. of a sudden, I'm like, three days later, I'm like, what Holy is shit, that? I had a thing. Or like, it's down. It's way down. So I, I'm like, what? Is, I was supposed to read that script for what? For who? Right. I have an audition for what three days ago? Yeah. That I missed? Yeah. Because. How do they not know to call you at this point? Well, I haven't gone on this, like, tirade. I haven't gotten upset about it. I'll tell you them. what we're going to do for you. We're going to edit a little. Uh, Cut together a something. A little sizzle more? reel. Of of uh, you and and email, and then we're going to send it to your people. Ken Ken's uh, you know what I'm doing. Livid I'm gonna, tirade. I'm going to send it to him in an email. See if that doesn't. That, uh, that's uh, that's between you two. <laughs> I don't. At that point, I don't care. And you know our, what I mean? And but I appreciate God. you doing that for me. Well, I'll tell you what. Here's my question to you, please. And this is a serious question. All right. Because as I said earlier, no, wait, I was nervous about this, and I also said that I had a quadruple espresso. May we pee? No, no, no. Oh. I, I, do you want do you want some more sincere answers, or do you want me to just uh, be uh, my slightly neurotic or weird like uh, amped up self? I, I, the goofy, fun, silly you is the one I fell in love with back in San Francisco. Another story, mm -hmm. and the one that I invited here. Okay, and the one who showed up. All right. If I may, you're being modest. And your answers have a mark of sincerity. All of them. It's well, just funny sincerity. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. As if nothing else, it was an honest <laughs> As comment to, to me. <laughs> <laughs> nothing else. Same. See? That's the great disclaimer, isn't it? This is the, here's another thing, a disclaimer that I would, I don't know if it's a disclaimer, but I'll talk to my mom, or I'll talk to somebody on my phone uh, on the phone. And but my mom does this all the time. She's like, all right, I'm gonna let you go. I'm like, I didn't say I wanna go. <laughs> don't put it on me. Right. I'm gonna let you all right, well, I'm gonna let you go. Very. No. Just say I'd like to go. Or I'm annoyed that you're not fully present talking to me, son. <laughs> but don't say I'm gonna let you go like you're doing I can I'll say I wanna go. Doing you a solid. At, it's a pet peeve of mine. It's a passive aggressive thing. I'm gonna let you go. Yeah. <laughs> How about just say goodbye? How about say I have to go? Yeah. What is it with family in the passive aggressive, by the way? I don't know. I'll, I don't know. Are it's, you gonna... it's, a, it's a backhand of compliments. Look, I know how busy you are, and right. I know you're too polite to I'm tell me how busy you are, so I'm, I'm just going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. You I love my mom, by the way. Let me just let me preface this. Love my mom. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like the expression, I'm going to let you go. Yeah. In fact, what she's really saying is, I have to go, son. That's right. That's I've had right. enough of this. I'm bored. That's what she's I'm, saying. Son, you're boring me. <laughs> That's what she's saying. I've had enough of this, son. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Well, I'm going to let you go. You know, it never dawned on me until you pointed out. I'm going to let you go. And now I, I don't know if I can let it I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do you a solid. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to let you go. Yeah. It's almost as kind as saying, you know what, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not that kind. Your money's not good here. They're, they're making it sound like they're doing you a solid yeah. and being generous. Your money's not good here. Um, I'm going to take care of you for this meal. How is... I uh, have the power. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. How is the pilot uh, for Fox that you and Eric are doing based on the brewery Dogfish Head, uh, the friends of yours? Do you drink beer? Yes. Yeah, do, have I you ever had Dogfish Head? I enjoyed a little hops head? last night. Do, do, have you ever had Dogfish Head? No. Have you ever had Dogfish Head? Yeah. Very popular beer. One of the biggest breweries, biggest microbreweries, or fastest growing microbreweries in uh, the country, probably in the world. Um, and um, Sam, the guy who created it, uh, is an old dear friend. He was a roommate of mine in New York, and he started brewing uh, off these little kegs in our apartment. And then he just built this business, and he became this kind of crazy, mad, genius guy who creates these like really cool beers that win, win awards left and right. And um, he wrote a book about all the kind of outside the box. I'm going to burp again. <clears throat> outside the box thinking of like how do, how does he create PR without any money and stuff like that and how he built this business. And um, we, my wife and I, opt and he built the business with his wife. Mm. And my wife and I optioned his book 
for me to play him, which is weird, um, uh, because we wanted to, we pitched a show about husband and wife working together, which we do, uh, and raising a family together, which we do, uh, because when you pitch shows to networks, they're always like, it has to come up with an idea that you, that, that's happened to you, something that's happened to you. It's real to you. It's real. And last year when we pitched something, it wasn't. We just were like, hey, how about these, this guy works on a beach and he, blah, 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 you know, like, and, they'll, and, and they want to hear, the, the first thing they want to hear in a pitch meeting is some personal story. Right. So then they, oh, okay, you know this world. Okay, great. So then this year we, we wised up and we're like, okay, let's do something about us working together. And our buddy uh, Sam wrote this book about creating a business with his wife. So we blended the two and we pitched that idea and uh, and so that's what we're doing. We're doing a show about a married couple who are chasing the American dream and building this microbrewery together. And you're writing it now? Yeah. Oh, I mean not right now. Yes, no, thankfully. Not this moment. Um, I feel like I've lost you. <laughs> no. Are you I, here? Actually, I got caught up in what you were saying. I'm actually now I in that know. world. I'm, I'm in that world. Where now. are you now? Where I'm are you the, really I'm now? at the brewery saying, wait a second. Something's not right with that keg. <laughs> it's hard to say the words microbrewery, isn't it? And you have to say them a lot. I was saying a lot. No, no, no. You when you're dealing truthfully. with this project, I'm sure you have to say those words often. No. No? I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I'm not writing it right now. So <clears throat> when I finish writing it, I'll let you know. I caught you writing a little bit during the intro. I'm not going to lie. When, when is it due? <laughs> I know when does it do and how are you with deadlines? <laughs> how fast you love typing. Um, my wife writes so fast, it's ridiculous. And so we banged out the outline. She wrote uh, her pass and just passed it to me. And so we're going to probably have a, a, a draft in by the end of this week. Okay. I don't know what, <laughs> what else do you Let me know say? when you want the notes. Just the notes on our, our session? Yeah, now. Tell me what to do. <laughs> Um, so I can't. Do. I don't know why you inspired the silliness. I'm sorry. It's just what happened. Can, can we ask? Can I ask him about Wanderlust? I Hello. You, I must be going. I wish I you would. I cannot stay. I came to say I must be going. I'm glad you came, but just the same, I must be going. I'll stay. A week. I was hoping you would jump in, but you don't know this one. I wish I knew the one. I love the Marx the, Brothers. Oh, I love the. I'll um, stay a week or two. Go ahead. The. Uh, I'll stay the summer through. But I am telling you. I, I must, must be, be going. going. Oh, he went down, right? Yeah. Oh, hooray for Cabin Spaulding, the African explorer. Did someone call me Snorri? Hooray, hooray, hooray. Yeah, see? So oh, good. Last night I shot an elephant in my pajamas. So how I got there, I'll never know. Kidding? In Alabama, Tuscaloosa. <laughs> <laughs> I like the. Um, Closer, closer. Tattooed lady. Oh, uh, uh, Lydia, oh, Lydia. Say hi, Lydia. 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 Lydia's Lydia's a tattooed, tattooed lady. lady. She has arms. Yeah, that's all the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um. <laughs> Other, when uh, do I get my notes? Yeah. <laughs> Wanderlust. <laughs> Wanderlust. Wanderlust, please, Sam, go. Want your character, you and, and uh, Michaela? Michaela Watkins in Wanderlust, steal the fucking thing. How did you do that? Well, uh, the first thing you do is make sure you, you're writing, you're, you're co writing yep. the, the script. Yep. So you make sure the part you're playing has a lot of funny lines. Got it. And less, take some away from the other. Make sure your character's loaded and the other ones yeah. don't shine. Yeah, yeah you want to push everybody else down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Now, how funny is Mikhail in that? It's amazing. The best. It's both amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Thank you very much for you're, saying that. You're most welcome. Uh, it was a fun part. We had a good time doing it. Yeah. <laughs> we talked with Joe Lowe about his appendage. Yeah. Uh, his, fake, uh, his fake cock. Yeah. It was, uh, I imagine it takes a number of days or takes of shooting that before everyone just stops crying from the laughter. It's that absurd. Well, you know, uh, originally we were auditioning people and the idea was it was going to be really somebody who was nude the whole time. And, and then... And you had to say to them during the audition, how big is it? Because we wanted well, to Two be people came in nude. Flubby. Two, two known actors came and just walked into the room nude. Sort of like the pirate costume. But still duct, duct taped. They had a pirate, <laughs> they had a pirate duct taped to their crotch. I mean, a parrot. Yeah. <laughs> take two. They had a parrot duct taped. Uh, fuck, <laughs> take three. Two people came in nude. Um, two people came in nude. And committed and said, fuck it. Yeah. And they didn't get the part. But they were because very good. Because the penis too small? 
No, the two guys. No, the two people Penis who came in too nude. Big. They knew it they was had too big. They, they, they came in nude with yeah. the fire hose. Yeah, they came in there like. Yeah. What do you think? Right. And I can act. <laughs> um, and we can act. And we can act. Probably <laughs> would have been the right thing to say. Famous acting team. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So so, you know, Joe said we asked Joe to do it, and Joe's like, absolutely. Um, and we talked about like doing a. a a, like a fake prosthetic, and we realized very quickly that that was a fabulous thing to do because, like, if somebody was there who was really nude the whole time and really comfortable with it, it would start to get like just like put a fucking robe on, get your penis out of here. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want your penis around all the time. Yeah. And if and if the, it was the opposite of that, if somebody who was like self conscious, then you would the performance wouldn't be great, and they would kind of. You know, be thinking about it. You yeah. could, you you would read that, right? So either way, it would kind of be annoying. Yeah. Or not be annoying. Either way, it would it would not you would not produce the best performance. And and that character, he was only part of his character was that he was a nudist. There was a lot more going on. Yeah. I think. And so Joe put this prosthetic penis on. As soon as that prosthetic penis was on, everybody was like fine with it. Yeah. And it was just it, it looked exactly like a cock, but like. But because it was plastic, we were like, hey, it was just on, you know, like, everybody was, like, smacking it around. Meanwhile, he's just completely, like, getting all this makeup, and it's like, it might as well be his dick. Sure. But it, but the the fact that it was a pla rubber dick, and, just... And extra long and dangly. Extra long and dangly. Yeah. Uh, made it, made it... Uh, instantly fun. Instantly more comfortable for everybody. Yeah. And so, then the funny can come out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, that's the international sign. For the funny coming out. <laughs> um, yeah, the the performance and the film itself uh, was something I enjoyed uh, from uh, soup to nuts, top to bottom. And in fact, when talking to Rudd when he uh, got in the mirror, he said, I think he said it was either day one or damn near day one. We didn't yeah, even know what the rest one. of the movie I was going to be. It was be. day one, scene one. What's when, that? When the, he gets into the mirror and has the, scene one. Yeah, scene one up. And so like the crew was like, what? What did we sign up for? What the hell's going on? So he's just like. Your vagina. I don't even know. <laughs> oh. Talk about Welcome off. to the Dickie Mart. <laughs> <laughs> a little off page. Yeah, yeah. At that point. No, but you know what? Uh, Paul riff, definitely riffed on that, but that was like a, about a three quarter of a page monologue. That was. With all that crazy shit. All the crazy shit, and then he riffed on it. But like that, what I, what, what's interesting is. You know, when Dave and I write, we'll we'll riff on stupid things like that, and we'll have like weird kind of tangents that we go on. Right. And when there's reviews of of things like that, people are like, oh, that was all improv, and we're like, no, it wasn't. Like those some of, some of those actual lines were were yeah. were scripted. But Paul did, you know, go off on that. But still, but, when you take pride and you come up with some some great jokes, and they make it into a run. You'd like like yeah. everything, they're like, "This is an improv movie," and we're like, "No, it's not an improv movie. We, yeah. we spent a lot of time writing it." Yeah. Um, but I should be that should should be kind of a compliment, right? If people think it's improv, that means it feels like it's felt natural, natural, and for the first time. And but yeah, but there's not a writer on the planet that wouldn't have a little something to say when in fact it wasn't right. improv. He's looking for the silver lining here. Or when people say that. like, "Ah, oh, the state." They, you know, he comes from the they, they come from the improv group, the state. And I'm like, "No, we weren't. We did. We wrote sketch. We wrote sketch." Yeah, it was not an improv group. It was not an improv. Oh, group. you were in a skit group. You didn't do skits. Did you see um, what was the uh, the uh, the Matthew Perry, oh, Aaron Sorkin, uh, Studio Six, Studio Sixty, where they the had this debate and Nate over Cordry. Has that argument where he yells at his parents for upset. calling it a skit? He was yes. upset between skits and sketches, sketches. I, I, which I thought was interesting because that never has been a, a thing. Sometimes I call them skits or sketches. I don't yeah. sketches, skits or bits. Oh my, yeah, I think is acceptable. That's right. Yeah, um, uh, you've spent a little time on the Twitter. Yes, Just a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. And you got fed up pretty quick. No, I like I'll have little bursts of like I like my my favorite thing on Twitter is answering people's questions. Right. Cause and and then and then this year in particular, I've had a lot of different things coming out, like just random yeah. like little parts of movies or like this animated thing, Axe Cop that I did and Children's Hospital, and so I've been like, you know, 
saying, hey, watch this, or this is coming out, which right. I never really did in the past. Because uh, I do want to know more about Axe Cop, because that was kind of a, a dream thing. It was a graphic novel uh, that you sort of went out of your way to let people know you wanted to be a part of. Yes. Yeah. Axe Cop was this, it, it's, a, it's a really cool graphic novel uh, where, and the, the backstory is um, uh, these two brothers, uh, Malachi and uh, uh, Jim. Uh, not Jim. Steve. Uh, uh, oh, God. I can't believe I'm blaming him. Anyway, two, two brothers uh, were writing. Uh, there's a 28-year-old brother, and he had a half-brother who was three, five, three, five, something like that. Uh, and he wanted to get to know him a little bit more. And so he's like, why don't you tell me stories, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll draw them. And he came up with the, the three-year-old or five-year-old, five-year-old came up with a um, uh, this axe cop and this whole world. And so when you read it, you should read it. It's kind of awesome. You could just go online and you could just each 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 story is like a page. Mm. So it's like you know, ten panels or whatever, six panels. And it's the this pure story. There's no adult getting in the way of like where it can go or what's going on. It's a it's a it's a kid's mind and what can happen and what what this hero does. He chops bad guys' heads off. He doesn't like little girls. He doesn't sleep at night. He you know, he's like he's just this superhero who's like just an awesome character. Right. And he created this world and um um Ethan, by the way, is in his name. Um and so he... It's not Jim, you're saying. It's not Jim. It may have been Jim at one point, but that was before I knew about him. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a great story. And so I heard that uh, ADHD and Nick Weidenfeld was uh, doing it. And so I immediately called him up and said, I, I want to, I can, can I, can you consider me for Axe Cop? And he said, oh, no, I can't because um, Nick Offerman's doing it. And I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you see the character, like that, that voice and, and Axe Cop was perfect. So I was like, well, consider me for something. I want to be in it because it's, it's, oh, cool. it's the coolest kind of thing out there, I think. Yeah. So you played? I play uh, the sidekick Flute Cop, which is a cop, like a, just like a New York City cop, like, you know, short sleeves, tie, overweight, and he has a flute. <laughs> he has a flute because? because? Because that's what the kid said. He's Flute Cop. <laughs> Except like, at one point he gets avocado juice on him and, sure. he t and he turns into avocado soldier. But then he turns back into flute cop. Uh, spoiler alert. Mm -hmm. Can't keep up with the kids. This is an animated film or animated series? I think it's animated video. <laughs> <laughs> huh? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I warned you, Kenny. A lot of takes it to Kenny today. Yeah, well. Did, why isn't there a camera on Kenny? Yeah, Isn't he's, that the, most he's, he's the most because, entertaining one in the because room. Because he'd get a lot of sympathy since his desk is a fucking chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Can we? Yes, can we can. Can we rose up? Like, just make my cheeks a little rosy. This, like, I feel like I'm sick. Go, is it? Don't go by those look, monitors. You, you, the monitors very bad blown monitors. out, and they're what not. What am I supposed to go by? They're not. Your word, feel? love, faith. Go by how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my word, love, and faith. How do you feel? Here, the monitors are blown out. Is this That's one of my favorite Woody Allen. That's just what it looks like. Yeah, see how much darker and richer it is oh with the color? Gosh, that's nice. Yeah. Is this live? Yep. <laughs> yeah. uh, the reason I ask about the Twitter is because we're going to wrap things up with a game that's sweeping the nation that Sam is the host of <laughs> called oh, Who me. Tweeted. <laughs> Celebrities have so much to say. Who Tweeted is the game we're going to play. Oh boy, I'm sure this will in no way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is going to be great. So here's the game. It's called Who Tweeted? I'm going to read a series of eight tweets, one at a time. All of these tweets were authored by either Tyra Banks, Paris Hilton, or Justin Bieber. So you're going to be playing against Kevin in oh, yes, this heated game. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, read these tweets one at a time. As soon as you feel like you know who authored which tweet, you ring in by saying your name, in which case this would be Ken. You'd be Kevin. Mm. I'll point to whoever rings in first, then you have three seconds to say either Tyra, Paris, or Bieber. How do, we, how do I ring in? <laughs> you say your own name. Okay. <clears throat> now you ring in, you get it right, you get yourself five points. You how ring many? in five. You ring in, you get it wrong, you're going to lose three. Once somebody rings in, 
No one else can ring in after that whether or not they get it right. I stopped listening, but everybody knows this isn't water, right? <laughs> <laughs> we all know it's Crystal Head Vodka. Now, whether or not you're listening, all you got to know is Tyra. What are you and uh, Dan Paris. Aykroyd in the uh, same uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you tried that? building? Have you tried that, Crystal Head I'm Vodka? A, I'm a heavy, really like it. it was good. I'm yeah, heavily well. invested in that company. All right. I gave them $200,000. Wow. I'm $195,000 in debt because of that. <laughs> Paris Hilton. That is correct. <laughs> Damn it, he's already winning. That's unfair. 20 bucks goes to the winner of this game. Uh, 20 US dollars. It's Andy Jackson, by the way, in case you're wondering. Are you ready to sort of play who tweeted? Yes. Tweet number one. Please. Things that have diet or light in the label mean that I can eat twice as much without feeling guilty, right? Paris Hilton. No, Ken, Kevin. Ken. <laughs> Is that like shooting into your own basket? What did I do? <laughs> yes. Three seconds. Paris Hilton. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> you probably would have known it was Tyra if you'd let me read the hashtag, oh, which is... Oh, there was a hashtag. I didn't hashtag. fucking know these. Oh, we're doing That's hashtag right. too? Hashtag ass maintenance. What? Ass maintenance. Justin Bieber. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's, this is why we play the game. That's all is right. Is that Bieber's new album? Yes. It Ass is. maintenance? Ass maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. Tweet number two. Woo! Looking forward to what is coming. Art is everywhere. Expect the unexpected. Kevin Paris. Incorrect, sir. Yeah, we're off to a great start. Fabulous. That was... Oh, you just did Kevin Paris. That's how you did well, it. Oh, I said my name. That's ring how he rings in, in. And then the choice. You don't have to ring in. <laughs> you don't have to smack the table. Just say your name. All right. Really say anything other than Kevin's name, so I'll right. know it's you. All right. Tweet number three. You won't know it's me if I say Kevin? <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> You're shooting this on I'm film. Buried in the Ethan. page. <laughs> buried in the page. Ethan, Jim. Tweet number three. I look like the crazy bird lady from Home Alone, but I don't care. It's fun. Uh, Ken? <laughs> yes? And let's go with... Uh, Let's go with uh, let's go with Paris Hilton. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Paris Hilton on that one. Uh, Woo! I would deduct points from Paris though, uh, as Jamie and I uh, discussed before. The Crazy Bird Lady was from Home Alone Two. Lost in New York. Two. There are you're gonna Colin duck. Lost. There are deduct. duck points. I'm deducting points from Paris. Hilton. Oh, deduct. Yep. I thought there were duck points, which is a whole. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> All right, let's go to question number four. Number four. Goes, goes into you. <laughs> Goes India. So you know when like you that. heck, I don't know. I'm trying to be clever, but can't think of anything. Help me. <laughs> That's a tweet. Ken. And let's go with Tyra Banks. Oh, he's running away with the game. Damn that it! Is correct. Tyra that wants is... to be clever. She wants to have a good time. So you know? bad. She, she wants to be. She does. She, she needs to be. <clears throat> can't get there. Tweet number five. Should I swim to Kevin try... Bieber? Oh, Ooh. now he's just, it's a new tactic. Oh, sorry, no. You just, what? It, that's five in a row without a beaver question. Oh, nah. that's what yeah. <laughs> Play the angles. Uh, it's not five in a row without a beaver. Getting fucked. That's not five in a row. <clears throat> uh, tweet number two was beaver. Uh, uh, I want to Ken read Bieber. I, I do want to read that fifth one just because it's insane. <laughs> Okay, please. Right, say it, say it. Read it, read it. it. Sorry. Read it. Should I swim? Kevin Bieber! <laughs> I'm going to deduct another three points if you keep this up. Should I swim to trampoline or bite these sweet potato fries with every sauce on menu? That's a real tweet that came out of a supposedly mentally healthy person's brain. Otherwise known as Tyra Banks. That's correct. Yeah, so yep, I would have listened. You're right. I Should I right. swim to trampoline or bite these sweet potato fries with every sauce on menu? Yeah, I, I wonder guessed. what she wound up doing. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. We'll what never you... know. <sighs> Fuck. Tweet number six. Just tweet her. Find out. Feel so happy and blessed that I get to tour around the world and play music. Ken, Ken Bieber. Ken Bieber. Ken Bieber. Ken oh, Bieber. I'm sorry, no. That's Paris. Come That's on. That's Paris Hilton, who also tours around the world playing music, apparently. You didn't know that, did you? No oh, yeah, one she's, does. A, she's a magician. She's I mean, a magician. musician. No one. <laughs> she's a magician. No one knows that she does music mm. except for her. Does she do magic? I want to party all the time. I just picture her she singing does the Eddie Murphy uh, song. <laughs> the disappearing, uh, the hide the salami trick. What's mm. that? <laughs> Speaking of which, another Eddie Murphy song going with that. In your butt. 
Put the boogie in your butt. Put put the boogie in your butt. Or put a dime. Or put a nickel. Or put a quarter. Or put anything in your butt. <laughs> yes. How can I follow that with tweet number seven? Let's do it. Let's do it. Big dinner tonight. What are you eating? Kevin Ken. Oh, you're not one of the I thought you tweeted that. Uh, that's definitely Tara. Mm, sorry, no, it is not. That's Bieber. <laughs> that is Bieber. That's fucking Bieber. Had Bieber all over. That stinks. That reeks of Bieber. <laughs> well, it's Smelly Bieber. That's, that's Smelly Bieber. <laughs> I'm sorry, fellas, but uh, tweet number eight is really just for fun at this point. As Don't be is sorry a, about it's, that. Let's plus four to, to negative nine. <laughs> so if you want to just send this one home with a bang, Kenny. Yeah, let's do it. Tweet number eight. I love monkeys. Oh, Kevin, Paris. Finishing with a score of negative 12. <laughs> oh, shit. <to> negative four. <laughs> Tyra Banks. Justin Bieber. Justin oh, Bieber, Bieber loves oh. monkeys. Bieber loves monkeys, guys. Oh, Bieber loves monkeys. But that no. is how you play. Oh, no. What the kind of a, won't take that now. What they kind will. of a 20 is that? Give me a, oh, mine's warped. Oh, it's warped. Boy. Well, for what it's worth, that's a play who tweeted. Thank you. Celebrities have so much to say. Who tweeted? Is the game that we just played. I do want to thank you so very, very much for uh, coughing up 97 minutes of your life today. You have a family. They're doing well. They're missing you. I take it uh, normally Sunday there might be some sort of family activity. What would it, on average that be, a family activity? We just moved into a new home and, and it has a pool. So, so the there kids... would be some pool swimming. Or just the, swimming. The four-year-old. Because I remember they just threw you in the pool 100 years ago. That's how you learned mm -hmm. the first time. What is the process like now? Uh, we throw her in the pool. Mm -hmm. And we see if she comes up rare. <laughs> and you're standing by waiting. That's right. She's really good at it, actually. My son had a harder time learning how to swim. Uh, but now he's really good at it. And she, uh, in the last two weeks, has really kind of uh, uh, turned a corner. And she can swim in the deep end. And you're comfortable with that? No, no. Let's be clear. No. Not at all. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what did you have for breakfast? Is there a brunch thing today? We had a, uh, there was bagels left over from yesterday, so we had some bagels. Day-old bagels, always Day good. Over, yeah, they were great, but um, unfortunately for me, mm. uh, they, you know, they're like cinnamon raisins oh, left, you. which are fine. Sure, just but not a favorite. No, I, I, if I'm having a bagel, I want an everything bagel. Or a sesame bagel, or poppy seed bagel. I don't want, I don't want um, like a sweet bagel. Yeah, just got a donut. The man likes a savory bagel. He likes savory. He likes a savory. Yeah, Put yeah. some salt on my shit. <laughs> That's uh, not just the name of your second book. It's no. how we're going to end the show. <laughs> Put some salt on my shit. Um, thank you, honestly and truly. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope it wasn't as painful as it seemed at times. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was delightful. I hope. Mostly. I hope I. Uh, oh no, you passed. I hope it was flying all right. colors. Um, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Um, um, yes, Sammy? Larry King? Well, I was not going to let him off the hook, just, but just, thank you for reminding me, because I am old. It's, okay, no, it seemed I did like threaten you, you at the to... outset uh, that at right. one point you Yes, were... Larry King. Stare down the barrel? Yeah. And uh, it's just that little bumper moment. Give me the, yeah, give me the, give me the... Uh... Thanksgiving, I like to teabag the gravy boats before the guests arrive. Poughkeepsie, hello. Okay. Uh, uh... <laughs> All good. Two, two trees sweat. Hot bottom, Pennsylvania. Hello. <laughs> Hot bottom, Penn. Come on. It's fantastic. Hot bottom, Pennsylvania. I dated a girl from Hot bottom, Pennsylvania. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Hey, listen, I'm going to let you go. <laughs> yeah! 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 It. yeah! I like the callback in this business. I enjoy a good callback. Especially when it involves your mother, not mine. <laughs> Is that All another right. joke? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sit there uncomfortably for another uh, 41 seconds while I wrap things up for the folks. At All home. right. All right, good. Can I, can I fuck with your eye line? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> As the, my mother would only. Uh, post tag. <laughs> now that the show is over, don't forget to sign up for your free trial of Hulu Plus. Go to your trial. Get your trial at HuluPlus.com slash chat. Why are you waiting? <laughs> go, go now.
for huluplus.com slash chat. Thank Ken Marino for sending you. <laughs> oh, I'm shiny! My teeth are out! <laughs> In a close-up, a foot from the light, the oh. man found some shine. Oh. Oh, what, a, what a fun time had by everyone in Ex this studio. Except our audio-only listeners. Yeah. They missed out. And there's several things. Yeah. Which, again, is a reminder why to tune in live. We'll see you uh, next Sunday with a guest to be named. <laughs> None of your damn business for now. And then tune in more soon. I want to thank uh, Jamie uh, and Sammy and Kenny here in the studio. Are we still on? A little bit. Oh, okay. And then um, you got your Josh, Jason, and Sonia uh, making things happening on the outer edges. Without them, nothing. Happens. Nothing. Not a damn thing. No. Well, you'd be more shiny because Sonia does the makeup. Thank you, Sonia. Um, and uh, Elaine Ewing. Putting in, uh, allegedly, her final run with us as the media maven of this program. I want to thank her for uh, damn near five years of uh, devotion and dedication to us and making the whole thing work. Uh, we got a new gal coming in. We'll tell you about her uh, if she survives week one. In the meantime, and as always... <laughs> I can't do the buffer gag We've if I'm We've tried laughing. the buffering at the close. It never works. Fuck. Get out of my face. <laughs>